this is it. First big full-time RV road trip adventure with the kitties. And uh, not sure how this is gonna go, but we're excited to give it a shot. And I see one coming. There comes Bailey. Oh, Bailey. Coming in. Here comes big boy. This is Brady. Oh, Brady, you ready? Ready, Brady. Oh, come on, bud. You're gonna be, oh, he's a boy. Somebody's already comfortable. Hi, Bailey. Thank you, baby. First glass of water from the new Berkey. First sip of the Berkey water. <laughs> Cheers to an awesome trip. Awesome trip, babe. Let the adventures begin. Here we go, ready or not, here we go. Bye Vegas, cross country, here we come. Can okay. you believe it? Oh, it's like hitting the road. It felt like we were just uh, packing up everything in here. We'll probably look back and say, man, we packed way too much stuff because <laughs> this thing is jammed up. This is jammed up. Yeah. But, but I'm excited. It's going to oh, be yeah. awesome. It's going to be a, an amazing experience. First up is yeah. Zion, right? Yeah, heading to Zion. It's What's about, the park called? Uh, yeah, we're going to an RV park there called Zion River Resort. Ooh. So it's supposed to be nice. Yeah. It's, uh, it's right there just outside the park and then you kind of go on in and experience the park. So. Nice and we do have our America's Beautiful Pass so we can go yes. and explore Zion freely. And how long is it going to take well, well, it from says, here to get Yeah it says about two hours but I figure the way I'm driving probably two and a half. <laughs> Countdown, countdown, getting super close. We're about seven miles to the Zion River Resort. Getting there. I know. Right? 14 miles, actually. Yeah. 14 miles. And actually an easy drive from Vegas, right? Super easy. Now, um, I did break something. Oh, no. The induction cooktop. I broke the induction cooktop, so maybe we get there. Uh, we can right. ask the folks if we could, um, you know, deliver an Amazon and get another one, because that induction cooktop is important right. for me. And it's safer for the kitties. All right, so our first fill up, I can't read that. What does that say for only half a tank? Uh, 17 gallons, 88 bucks. 17 gallons, 88 bucks. We're just getting started. <laughs> We're just getting started. Oh my God. So one thing about kicking off our trip heading to Zion, it's just really beautiful. It's not a super long drive, so you can kind of warm up to the adventures of the trip. And yeah, there might be a little sticker shocks every so often, like the gas at half tank price, but I'm really excited to see how the kitties handle this because so far they've been very good. But I also know they're probably just as hungry as we are. So we're just about here. Looks pretty gorgeous. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Home for the next several nights. First night. Hi. Look at Bubby. Hi, Bobby. You look so comfy. They're warming up to the RV. Oh, yeah. I think they are ready for snack and bedtime. I think, well, we're ready for bedtime. They may be like you know, exploring all night. That's true. Oh, that's true. Say hi. Yes, say hello. Yes. All right. We'll see you in the morning. Well, bright and early. Nice Good job. Good morning. I know it's like an hour difference. So it's almost 730 here which means it's 6.30 back in Vegas time. So we are cranking, yeah, we're right. up and ready to rock. <laughs> yeah, we got in late last night, but we are off. We're off. Off to Zion. Off to Zion. First it's time. First time, we have to catch a shuttle bus. Yes. Right, because it's just the easiest way to get there. But it's packed, the 831's packed. So right. this is our option. Here we go. Uh, we made it. <laughs> just in time. Right, free shuttle once you get in the park. Yes, and it's uh, stop five, but we're going to the Emerald Pools, which is supposed to be really nice, right? Yeah, it's, uh, we're kind of just oh, kicking off exploring. Our first uh, time exploring in Zion, so. I 
breathing in that fresh air. Ah, it's so nice. Do you want to hit the trail first, or should we check out the? Uh, well, I think we get the lodge. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll grab another coffee. <laughs> you know me. Found your coffee after yeah, all. Not a bad little cafe here, right at the lodge. We were like up so quick this morning to get on the shuttle. So I've got to go to the uh, sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits mm, coming up. Nice. Got two of them. Two of them. Right? There. Of course, a couple of lattes. Hey, I'm oh yeah. I'll do the track. Great little dancing today. <laughs> little dance on the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Is it wildlife they speak of in the Oh, yeah, that's it. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> Come on. We're working here. The dancing hyena. <laughs> well, they, the Zion Lodge is pretty cool. I, yes, right? it is. But if you want to stay there, they said you have to uh, book it well in advance. They're booked through November. I know. Right? That's unbelievable. Yeah. What is it, like 13? I guess you can make reservations, what, 13 months, 13 in, months advance. in advance. So, if so you want to stay here, land well ahead. Well far in advance. Yes. Or just. Do like we do. Get yourself an RV. <laughs> exactly. One thing that's great about Zion is that there's trails for everyone. You have really kind of the more basic one here, which is absolutely beautiful, the Emerald Pools Trail. But then you of course have some of the most uh, dramatic, difficult ones and scary ones available as well for the more extreme climbers. And that would not be us at the moment. We're just warming up for we're, that. We're warming up for it, <laughs> warming up for it. This is something else. I know. I never expected this to walk back behind here and see. Right. To walk back behind here and see waterfalls with with flowers and monarch butterflies. This is like a whole other world here. And it's so beautiful. And there's we're just getting started. It's amazing. Look at this. I love how look at the water coming off above. You're kind of walking underneath the waterfall a little bit. So we're at the lower uh, viewpoint of the Emerald Pools, which is absolutely stunning. And there's a couple more tiers you can go up to kind of view them from different perspectives. But this one really is a lot of greenery. It's beautiful. Um, and we're probably gonna explore a little bit more, do you think? I, a little bit more. Yeah. I can see a kind of a cool spot up there. Maybe we'll go up to that ridge right across the top. Ooh, okay. Just a little bit up. Yeah. Level up, level up. Level up, buttercup, level up. It really almost makes you miss camp. I know. Oh <laughs> like man. Here you miss being up at camp in New Hampshire. Like just the air. I mean, obviously doesn't oh. have this around it, but boy, the greenery, the vegetation, gorgeous. Oh, it's amazing. And it, it's funny you hear voices. You think they're right around the corner, but it's like sound just travels. Hello. Through the gorge. I think they're worth the uh, hike. Oh, for sure. I could sit here with a little lunch and enjoy just the sounds of the water crashing on the rocks here. I love it. And it's refreshing to beat that heat. <laughs> yes, the crowds are definitely starting to roll in now. Yeah, which it's is getting a little bit later. We get here really early. I mean, we got here probably a little after about 7.45. Yeah. So I think it's important to get here early because then you can enjoy this without the crowds. Okay, so I see a little bit of a trail, Dave, off that direction his horses you want to go check them out absolutely let's go check out the horses oh we're, we're kind of actually on the trail so watch out because there is some horse love scattered about here but this is beautiful look at the water it's so beautiful yeah the horses go right on through the uh, river oh, there the river. so this is a really great opportunity that you guys can come down here and enjoy it's you can ride horses here there's a three-hour ride and there's a, an hour ride and the hour ride, we just talked to several folks that just jumped on the ride here. They had such an incredible time. You kind of go through the river. And uh, it's like 50 bucks a person, right, babe? Yeah, it doesn't not seem too bad. Not bad at all. It's well worth it. Hey, guys. The 
I have an idea for you. After that great day, I think we should stop over and get some food and maybe a little beer. Ooh, and where are we going to do that? Well, maybe at the Zion <laughs> Brewery. All right, so which beer are we going with? I don't know the name of it. It's a special that they have here, but it's a light and crispy. A light and crispy seasonal beer, and which sounds kind of like the beer we like it. That's so. true. Not too Not too hoppy. hoppy. A little wimpy. Right. A little wimpy. <laughs> Got that right. A little wimpy. So you uh, feeling some apps? I am feeling an app in particular. The uh, one that she mentioned, our waiter, waitress, she said uh, the chicken wings are supposed to be dynamite here. So I'm ready for some chicken wings. Little mess. To be full transparent, this is round two. <laughs> What you got going on over here? Is that while I'm hooking up the cable, baby? Oh, first time ever using the cable. Like, we really are. This is probably more than fun because we really never right. use the cable. It's interesting because it's like a little rubber piece ah. that you kind of have to fold into. It probably uh, keeps it from getting wet. Exactly. I love the. The little gloves. <laughs> I love the gloves. Got to keep the uh, snakes away. Oh, jeez. Mm. Let's see if it works. All right, let's try it. Right, here we go. So, input. Maybe we go to TV. Let's see. See if it works. Let's see what happens. Oh, the cable works. We got TV. Uh, if you want to watch it. Uh, what do you think, birthday boy? Okay, someone is clearly not interested. <laughs> when it comes to full-time RV living, we're definitely rookies on the road. But I got to tell you, this is a great start. Coming here to Zion. What a beautiful spot. Being here with Tanya is amazing. And our two kitties. It's really great having the kitties here really kind of completes the family, which is so awesome. Really looking forward to it. And it's really time to get cooking, so we're gonna get this grill fired up. Ooh, so what you got going on over here? More fire. More fire. Yeah. Another simple dinner though, just turkey burgers tonight. Like it. Right? Sometimes simplicity is nice. Yeah, it's fine with me. I just thought, you know, it's not too bad for you, turkey burgers, right? I love it. Get a little healthier. Cold night tonight. A little. <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> right? It's like, I feel like we're back in uh, winter camping. Oh, I know. It totally feels like we're back in It's like in windy camping. and uh, right. <laughs> it got quite cold. I actually had to put the hood up because right? it's that cold. <laughs> the wind's still blowing. Beatles love my hey. Little chicken burger. Is it delicious or is it dry? I right, pretty good. Yeah, buddy. You made a nice uh, thick turkey burger. Keeps that moisture in, see ya? Oh. Get a glimpse of that. Oh, kind of that. kind of a non-brioche bun. <laughs> non-brioche bun. <laughs> yeah. Looks delicious. Nice job, babe. All and right. The fire nice is job. Raging. Fire is nice. It's warm. Yeah, I need it. <sighs> Looks like it's about 6.30. Hey Siri, what's the weather outside? It's currently clear and 48 degrees. Whoa. Hey babe. Yeah. Good morning. So I know we weren't thinking about going to the narrows today, but it's yeah. 48 degrees out there. Ooh. That is, that's going to be a little chilly. I know, you're right. walking in a river for like, you know, miles. <laughs> it's exactly. Like, it's going to be freezing at your feet. Yeah. So. Uh, what do you think? Um, we could certainly do it another time yeah. as well. It seems a little cold now. You almost want to do it when it's nice and hot. And so yeah. It's more refreshing. I agree. Right? I agree. All right, so I have to stay accountable as promised this long road trip i'm gonna try and do some form of exercise every day to stay accountable to losing weight and being focused and creating great energy and a great mindset so first things first pop up stretch and then go for a bike ride or a walk Ooh, good morning good morning let's try this again so we are still here in Bergen, utah it is very very windy today um it looks like a cold front's come in because it went from literally 100 degrees yesterday to like sweatshirt weather today but that's not going to stop me from trying to be a little bit more accountable to my health and my mind so i'm getting up in the mornings because dave and i really want to start doing more hiking adventures and so i'm going to try and wake up every morning i'm going to have my energy green juice uh, and I'm going to try and get some exercise in whether it's a form of walking, maybe going for a swim when it's not so freaking cold, or a bike ride. So today going for a bike, uh, a walk, I'm going for a walk to really kind of kick things off and maybe even a slow jog. Let's see how it goes. But it is cold and I'm excited to kind of 
get this started. So maybe for the first part of this walk, let's just show you guys a little bit of the campground here. It's actually pretty nice. They have like a gazebo area off in the back there, a place for uh, if you have kids to come, a little playground. Um, and it's just, the views are awesome. So if I turn you around here, check this out. We got the mountains way off in the distance, but over there they have uh, which looks like cornhole. And then there's some volleyball that you guys can rock and play. They have grills and an outdoor kitchen here. So this is pretty neat. Before I really get going on this power walking sesh, I have a question for you RVers out there. So I find Dave and I, we find ourselves as like RV newbies, constantly like looking at other rigs from like, whoa, those are cool tires. Wow, that's a cool lift. Ooh, look at those lights. But we can't be the only ones. So do you do that? And as an RV veteran, do you do that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, getting them ready. I see that. Uh, I've, been, I've been wanting to try these for a while now. I know, much. Right? these are much better than the bigger ones we have. These smaller ones actually fit better in the garage uh, no, space. They're, yeah, no, they're perfect for the Echo and for kind of full-time RV living, no doubt about it. And so is uh, yeah, this weather light. right now. I like those actually. All right, well, Hi. let's ride. Let's go ride. I think I see Dave in my rear view mirror. Hey Dave, I see you in the rear view mirror. <laughs> There he is. Ooh. Uh, Smooth like butter. Oh, I've heard that before. <laughs> Ooh. You know, it really looks good. That t shirt on this bike. <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Had no idea this was up this far. See, just having a little electric bike. I initially thought we we're gonna have to stay on like the main roads, but nope, we did not. We found this really cool little road off the main road, but it gives you like views like this. Like that is amazing. Hey Dave, I'm about to fix some ooh, oh, lunch. Oh, perfect timing. Ooh, perfect this, timing for this lunch. Makes you, this makes you think about lunch. Ew. All right, watch out, babe. Well, yeah, I better, better back hey, away from that I one. Remember I said to not let it get too heavy? Yeah. I let it get too heavy. Yeah, how, how many days is that? Like four days, though? About four days, yeah. Wow, so we had four days and that yeah, little puppy. Here we go. Hit that button. That's because there's no number two. Nice. And there it goes. Down the drain, down the drain. Down the hatch. Hey Dave. Yeah. So this latch, the door is having trouble closing. Ah! Oh no. What's going on? Yeah. You're kidding me? Like the first like <laughs> it's been like two days. I know. Wait a second, what's going on here? Alright, so we have a little situation. Dave is actually gonna take a look at the door, but it looks like it's hitting the top. Like it might be a little bowed out or something happened with the frame, maybe the heat. I don't know, but we got to fix this before the next adventure because we have to be able to close that door before we can drive. So where are we at with the door? Yeah, well, I mean, I did push it up a little bit, so it, it is closing. It may not be the perfect fix, but it's working. Okay. So we'll take it. I do. It may have swelled up a bit. I want to have it kind of have that looked at. I'm reluctant to take a hammer to it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree. Not yet. It's too yeah. early. Yeah, it's exactly. Early. If you have to take a hammer, maybe we'll take a hammer. <laughs> But not today. Not today. Not today. But hey, it's closing now, so that's good. We had a productive day filming today and time to got some editing done on a video you're gonna see very soon. So I think it's time now just to relax a little bit poolside. But it's pretty busy right now here, I gotta say. This is definitely a very kid-friendly pool at the moment. It's like three feet here. I know, it's pretty busy though. Right, That's I know, busy. it's been super busy. Yeah. Tons of kids. Oh, yeah, it's great, because it kind of has that feel for family, right? Swimming in the pool. Twisting by the pool. Twisting by the pool. Let me tell you something. One thing about staying in a pool for way too long, which is kind of what we're doing right now, you get really cold, and that hot tub is packing up. So I think it's time for us to get out of this pool into something warm, and I have a bright idea for tonight. Well, this has been a great first few days of full-time RV living with our two cats, don't you think, babe? Oh yeah, the cat's really enjoying it. We're enjoying it. I, you can't ask for a better kickoff. We met so many great people so far, and that's kind of what it's about, meeting great people, enjoying the experience. Even the ups and downs that we've had, like that door, you know, hopefully know. it doesn't- Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that it keeps closing. 
I think that's what it's all about. And we have so much to see and do. Now, I'm over here kind of scratching through some DVDs to pick from tonight. I haven't seen them, there's a ton of them. So I'm just gonna like pick one, see what happens and go from there for an awesome movie night because we gotta chill, relax. Oh, good morning. Yeah, yeah. we're working on, I know. I passed out. I know, well that's good. Yeah. I mean, this way, we're, looks like you're starting to tidy up things out yeah. here. Like yeah, what's it's kind of a, kind of refreshing our water. Like, uh. We're going boondocking, right, for a while. So we're gonna refresh the water. Of course, emptying the gray, uh, getting things all ready to go. So I gotta pack everything up. Hopefully I can get it back in the way it was when we started. I know, that's always <laughs> the, the, the way it is, right. the puzzle pieces, exactly. right? Exactly. Well, it should be better because a, a lot of a lot of groceries and water and things we've used here might well, give you a little, little more room. You excited? I'm very excited. I think first right now I need to uh, take a shower to feel refreshed yeah. and have some coffee. Okay, I am exhausted, you know, kicking off today. Exhausted is not a great way. We have a long drive today to a very cool hidden gem spot. So I think I need to shower and freshen up. So this will be the fastest freshen up you'll ever see. Now let the day begin. Let the journey begin. Yeah, we have a long drive ahead of us. Five hours today to this boondocking spot. So. We've never been. Right. So. And I hope it's going to be cool. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Because yes. if you get there when it's nighttime, I'm just I'm just hopeful the roads will be fine. Exactly. It's kind of a remote spot. The, ra <laughs> the, ra the ranger said uh, the roads were good, but hey, it's all relative, isn't it? <sighs> Find out. We're headed off to a remote area of Utah to boondock for the next several nights. But before we do so, we need some food, some groceries. So Tanya has gone into Walmart. And of course, Walmart is our friend. And I'm excited to see what kind of food she picks up. I definitely want to do some grilling when we're out there. And I'm actually hanging out here in the parking lot with the kitties. There you are. Hello. Nice little cozy spot there. Now, where is Brady? Hello, Brady. Are you under here? I'm gonna make it out Brady in there. Awesome. Guess what I found. What'd you find? Klondike Crunch. Oh, Klondike <laughs> Crunch. Now that's the important one. Oh, we could never find it. That's the important one. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the flank steaks. Okay. But I got burgers. Okay, burger Round beef for burgers. Got some that. great, so I can make up nice roasted potatoes on the grill. And some chicken, so we can do some uh, barbecue chicken dyes. Sounds good to me. All right, let's load up, because we got a let's load it up. long road ahead of us. Long road. And a short time to get there, but it's really a long time yeah. to get there. And we're going to a remote spot, so we got to get I know, moving we there. Get moving. Make sure we can find a little boondocking spot. Keep saying that, and I'm getting more and more nervous as we say yeah, that. I, I, I hear you. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, one of the coolest things about RV road trips are being able to see the road of America from this perspective. You know, it's one way to see it via train, another way to see it via airplane, but to be engulfed and embracing all of Mother Nature's beauty is very exciting. Except when she throws some wind at your truck. I am not really prepared for all this gusty driving. And it is. I'm Disgusting. I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm like, as we're driving, first of all, there's no edges. We're in like a box. And then it says like gusty winds for the next few miles. And we're really feeling the gusty winds. Okay, you can really hear the wind. That's, we're not on a gravel road. That's the wind. Yeah, the wind's a weapon. I'd like to apologize, ladies and gentlemen, but we're going through a little clear road turbulence at the moment. Uh, the wind conditions have really picked up. We're going to try to find you some nice smooth road quite soon so just uh, stick with us have some patience thanks again ladies and gentlemen that was from our captain speaking please remain seated with your seat belts fastened for the remainder of the ride including you stewardesses yeah, and the kitties <laughs> and the kitties that sign says we're supposed to be heading off this exit wedge overlook is yeah. 40 more miles yeah. right now and it's like 5:30. Yeah. i think we should give it a try 
Yeah. Yeah, I think we give it a try. Um, two hundred eighty-five miles to yeah, empty, which is fine. So we get the so two. So forty. We'll, it'll be eighty miles. Yeah, we'd have like as long as we're above two hundred, we're in pretty good shape. Well, we filled it up right before we came in, and we had about like three twenty-nine or something, right? So we've kind of Woo! come out. But here we go. All right. Let's see how it is. We can always uh, we can always say, you know what? We're gonna come back. We're gonna boondock here. Here we go. And then head back and find like a KOA or something. <laughs> That is so beautiful. Gorgeous. I know folks talk about there's like what they call the little Grand Canyon up this way, and you kind of get a sense of it right from that. I mean, that's pretty beautiful. You're absolutely right. Wowzers! Are you excited? Wowzers! Wow. Look, 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 Look at that! Look at that out! Wow! Damn. What is that? It's a Billy. pillar castle. Pillars Canyon. <laughs> There it is, the uh, Little Grand Canyon. The Little Grand Canyon. And too bad it was 40 miles of washboard road <laughs> we didn't want to take. We so we're, do it. we're doing a little detour here, but there it is. That's beautiful. Holy yeah. moly. This part of the drive is unbelievable. Yeah, but it's kind of, you know, 6%. Bit of a grade. Bit of a grade, some sharp corners, but boy, when you get those views like Ooh. that. Unbelievable. Okay, well, we just had our first uh, boondock fail. I, I had these, uh, I had these big plans to go check out in Utah the what they call the the little Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon which is supposed to be beautiful. But when we got off Route 70, uh, there's a 40 mile stretch of dirt road. You, you know that down. we mentioned, we showed you that yeah. earlier. Yeah, 40 mile stretch, and it was just. You know, it looked like it was going to be all washboard with the kiddies. Yeah, it it's pretty much was not, washboard. But hold happening. on, hold on. Yeah. Let's, can you guys smash that thumbs up button for Dave? Because you know what? I don't think 40 miles, 40 plus miles yeah, of crazy. washboard bumpy roads for the cats would be settling for them. So we're in a pretty cool spot right now, but we shall see. We just kind of found it last minute. So tonight is going to be burger night here at our new little campground spot. Now, interestingly enough, the views are pretty cool, but there is a train that just ran by us tonight. I will say the RV definitely kept it kind of quiet, but we're going to sit out and enjoy. Got the fire pit going. Hey, babe, those burgers smell amazing. Oh, awesome. They Wait. smell amazing. Right. And I am freezing out here. <laughs> it's oh, cold, cold out here. fire going here. Hold on. Oh. Oh, hold on. We can work on that. Good morning, good morning. So Dave and I had a great night's sleep, but I wanted to kind of mention this. You know, we didn't get a chance to really check out that little Grand Canyon, which is something we really wanted to do. Um, but we ended up in a hidden gem spot here called Helper, Utah. And it's sort of this old mining town. It's got a lot of great history, fun trails we heard about, and just meeting the staff this morning really makes it all worth the experience. Now, initially we only planned on staying here for one night and then moving along, but now we're gonna have staying here for a couple nights because there's a lot to explore, including the downtown. There's supposed to be some trails we can check out and even a waterfall area, which is called Gordon Creek Falls. So not too far, we might pop out the bikes go for a ride and really just check out what this place has to offer but first before any of that happens coffee mm. i gotta go get dave all right so i think before we get this day started now we have to kind of since we're going to be staying here a little bit longer we yeah. have to figure out what we're going to do are we going to stay in this spot which is right by the train or find something else i'd like to check out there's a, a views along like the price river spots I think we should go down, go head down by the river. Down by the river. And see if we can get our van down by the river for a few nights. Uh, okay, not gonna lie, I already looked you guys up. I'm totally gonna follow you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so where are we going? So we have decided to check out spot 200. Um, the team here has been phenomenal. They gave us some ideas. I was kind of mentioning earlier in terms of where we could hike, um, going downtown, some trails. So I'm excited even to check out the uh, falls. Oh, this spot's not too bad. 
This is one of the spots down by the river. Oh. What do you think, babe? Can you hear the river? Oh, you can actually, yeah, right over here. I can oh, hear it. Oh, wait, hold on. You're right. Right? I think we should skip on over to the river. Baby, time to uh, get these engines rolling. What's going on? What? What's going on? I gotta use the bathroom. Uh oh! Stop. <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh, I think it's smart though. Before we head off. Oh. Now I'm ready to ride. Cue the music. Wow, babe, this is really neat. It really is. It's, it's like an old gas station, almost like a, a fixture, a museum, popped in the center of, of it all here in downtown. <laughs> I know, completely refurbished, too. I mean, look at that. That is so cool. Look, Wait, Continental Oil Company. What does that say? Oh, the prices? Oh, my. Is that cents? 38 cents a gallon on that one? 38 or? cents a gallon. And this one says 31 cents. What? Are you kidding me? That all doesn't right. exist anymore. But there's a lot of cool cars over here. And it, right. That looks like a garage. Is it open or just kind of a museum? I don't know. I think it's like a museum. You just kind of go, we can look in the windows maybe. Wow, man, there's some cool cars in here they're refurbishing. I mean, look at these things. This one looks like it could use some love and attention. Look at the, look at the thick glass on that one. Yeah, they probably got that one a little bit more recently. It's like a living museum, right? I mean, the inside, everything is set up like it probably was back in the day. You have an old Coca-Cola uh, bottle machine, the old Quaker State Motor Oils. It's really cool looking. This place looks pretty cool, babe. Yeah. Like, like cool rock. eatery and pub. pub. And I'm about to balance rock. There's food in my belly. It's a great day. It's a great day, man. Helper Utah. Helper Utah. And this is just half an order. I know. Right? Can you imagine if we were so, to two orders of the correct burritos? Yeah, yeah. So if you're coming here, guys, the, the sizes, the portions are huge, okay? So we actually shared the breakfast burrito, and it comes with two pretty monstrous ones. I'm excited. Yay. Give it a try. Give it a shot. A little cheesy and, and sausage and bacon. That looks great. Just need a little salsa in that guy. Start it up. Now that is a breakfast burrito. What? Kind of it's wobbly, they said. Wanna give it a shot? I'm not gonna give it a shot. If you wanna take it, you can. I'll walk it, because they said it's wobbly. But if you wanna ride it, you can. It sways. Oh my God. Maybe really... I'll walk it. Oh my God. 
That's a stop it, stop it, don't do that. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, I think we'll walk this across the bridge. This bridge is kind of swaying right now. And of course, I'm walking on it, it's all this wind. There's like the water. Got some folks waiting for me up ahead. All right, here we go. There are so many cool, neat pockets here. I mean, I feel like we haven't even scratched the surface. I know, a lot of cool stuff to find to explore and just discover. We've actually come to a really neat part here of the river trail. And uh, we're actually inside of this labyrinth. And Dave, does this almost look like the labyrinth we walked through in Hawaii? It does, oh yeah. It looks super cool. It's very cool. So you have to figure out how to right? get to the middle, right? I guess so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think you do the lazy way, but is it bad luck to just step over the stones? Terrible luck. Terrible luck. It goes this way. I think it does. <laughs> Coming at you. I'm a, all right, I'm almost there. You got it. Woo nice job. Make a wish. Make a wish. <sighs> I have a good one. Ooh, that's a good wish. So I thought it'd be a really cool point after a nice breakfast and ride to talk about Helper and the historic parts of Helper and you know what the Gary and his brother um, they did and that's the, what was their last names Dave? Yeah, De Vincent. Yes, De Vincent brothers. the De Vincent brothers um, took this old town and really got inspired because they love to rebuild old things. So why not take a town and rebuild it? I mean, they love building motorcycles and cars, so why not build a town? Oh, I'm Bob De Vincent. Yes. And, and you're the other half. Vincent is the one that does these old buildings. Aww. He's doing a lot of them on Main Street right now. Well, I love, love the story. We kind of heard a little bit of the story between what, how you got inspired, you know, by this. Obviously, you love to build old things, such as cars yeah, and motorcycles, so why not build a, a town? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> one building at a time. You guys back out of Connecticut initially? Or? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Fairfield, Connecticut. Fairfield, okay. We, that's where we grew up. Here's a picture of this uh, building when wow. the sign says 50 cents for a room, but it's more money now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, the sign's still there. You kind of, uh, yeah. So you're telling yeah. me it's not 31 cents a you gallon anymore for <laughs> gas, huh? It's been it. garbage. Darn it. Yeah. Jeez. If you were here in the 1970s, this was Lupo's Lounge. It was a place where everybody hung out and party. Now, during those years, these walls were covered with wood paneling. Remember that thing wood paneling? So nobody got to see this sign. You have to read the rules of this. That place. was there the whole time, wasn't it? It was covered up since yeah. the Great Depression. Yeah. So this place is yeah. the prohibition place where underneath this yeah. where is where they would kind of get things in and out. It's like under in yeah, the basement. There's level. a tunnel tunnel. Wow. Doorway. I could show you that when you come downstairs. Wow. That is called a magazine door. They Whoa. use those heavy doors for coal mines. I'm getting a little chills. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Silence of the Lambs, here we go. I'm having an old friend for dinner. Oh, don't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Now, behind the magazine door, you would have boxes of dynamite for the coal miners. Wow, wow. boxes of dynamite. Yeah, now, this Boxes is, of dynamite. Wow. This is like behind this the is scenes. Why we're down here. This is every single part to build a Harley Davidson, wow. but it's all organized. This is so cool. So you can basically see what used to be a tunnel. Right, this used to be a tunnel actually during the Prohibition era to kind of escape out, whether it's with the liquor or the people. Mm. Get out of there. The cops are coming in from uh, from Salt Lake. Exactly. You know, doing a... Uh, or someone's coming in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Heading out, but right now it's filled in. But behind there, is there still a tunnel under there? We, we don't, don't know. know. <laughs> let's, let's bring out the... Uh, Let's bring out the Let's just ask out. the ghosts. Yes. <laughs> Talk about walking into history. I mean, from the vintage bikes to the parts to the paintings to some of the like 
old school memorabilia. It's just amazing what the brothers have done here. You just really feel like if you want to live in a town that's, that has a lot of great history, that's gonna be preserved, well, these are the guys doing it, taking oh, yeah. it building by building and really trying to building up this this beautiful city. I, I just think it's amazing. So that was quick, babe. Oh, yeah. All right, we're back at Balance Rock for some more eats. Oh, well, and now, to Cindy. She said, come back for some birria. Yeah, this has had some birria uh, tacos, which is kind of the, the special of the day. So we're hoping they still have some available. Yeah. So what's your first reaction, babe? Yum, yum. It's, yum. It smells really good. Did you yeah. see that? And look at the sauce. The dipping looks so here. good, yeah. Oh, oh man, I can't like, wait. I'm like triple dipping with that right there. I agree. I can see why they run out. I mean, look at that crispiness on the skin. I get myself ready for this. Get a roll the, the roll sleeves. Get a roll the sleeves for that. Get ready to like Stretch dive. it out. Oh, oh. Let's it go, goes. we're ready. Nah, it's go time. That's right, it's go time. We're ready. <laughs> crunchy tortilla and the sauce. Everything just blends so wow. perfectly. Sounds awesome. You're gonna love this. Mm. Is that a thumbs up or what? I give it two, but I'm holding on to that taco. <laughs> Okay, so Dave and I, we may have encountered our very first situation here in Desert Snow. So last night, Dave and I were just relaxing and we heard from the water pump a sound like brrr, yeah, just like that, brrr, and then stop, as if it was trying to refill itself up or get the air out of there. And right away we're thinking, is it possibly a leak? So it was kind of late last night, so we waited till today. We come outside and right by the wheel well in the back, it looks like there's a water like drips, there were water drips at some point. So we shut off the uh, water pump and we're trying to assess it. Now it doesn't look like the water um, is diminishing from the tank fast, so we're not sure. So of course being newbies, right away we're thinking, okay, this might be a water leak, who knows? So we're gonna try and dissect the situation and hopefully it's just condensation that we're looking at from like the refrigerator. Does the refrigerator condensation drip outside? Do you know? If you do, you veterans out there, let us know in the comment section below because we're a little nervous now to kind of think about that this just might be a, our first RV issue. So it's kind of dripping from right in here somewhere. And why we thought it might have been the refrigerator is because the refrigerator is right here. So if there's a condensation pipe or something we're thinking it might drip out the back but why here i'm not sure but it's somewhere down here somewhere is the drip it looks pretty dry in it there. does not feel wet no not here i don't see anything here so maybe just maybe it's the condensation from the refrigerator all right so i think dave and i we've discovered the problem right it looks like the yeah. there definitely is a leak and it's coming from down in here and I'm not sure you guys definitely can't see that, but we can, but it looks like it's on the cold water pipe, a little bit below the Aquago system. Yeah, it looks like it might be the water that's actually feeding into the Aquago. But that is a lot to get to. You it is. That's, oh. you, you can't even get to that. Some we have discovered that there is definitely an issue of plumbing going on. So we have a little, little, uh, little, little problem we got to fix here. So we definitely found it's not the refrigerator. I suspected that we, I thought it might've been condensation from the refrigerator. But no, we have a small leak. So I guess the Googling and the manuals begins. Good morning, good morning. So I got my green juice in hand and I'm gonna try and keep myself accountable since the beginning of this trip. I have been doing some sort of form of working out, whether it's bike riding, going for a walk, and today I'm gonna do a little bit of exercise on the mat. But I wanted to quickly update you on the water leak issue. So we contacted Winnebago this morning. They were great um, in terms of uh, trying to work with us to find someone that could help us out here in Helper, Utah. And by the graces of the goodness, um, we were able to connect with someone that's gonna come out here today to take a look at the leak. And uh, we're leaving here tomorrow, so we're gonna pack up things. And as we pack up tomorrow, we'll head over to their shop and they can kind of fix it from there if it's as simple as what we think it might be. Um, but we shall see, fingers crossed right now. We're very excited that we were able to make this connection, but even more excited that we stayed calm throughout the process because as we have learned, 
things happen in an RV brand new or not they will always happen so just stay calm you will figure it out at some point it will get taken care of but it's all how you go into the process is gonna be how you come out of the process so fingers crossed Look at that TV. <gasps> well, you know, we love our little antique shops. Right. Great. So we got to go in, I think. This is called Bug and Bird. This neat shop here called Bug and Bird here in Helper is owned by a lovely lady named Jana. And uh, you could just tell from all the unique pieces, she's got a gold mine here. So cool. What did you just find? Well, El Cortez jacket. We produce miners. Look at that, huh? We can escape Vegas, but Vegas can't escape us. <laughs> Welcome to Gateway Lane. Now, this bowling alley here, Gateway Lanes, has quite the story behind it. We've talked to quite a few folks that have other stories, not just here. Even the middle school has some ghosts that have been seen with some video footage. So we're gonna go and talk to the owner, Laura, maybe do a little bit of bowling and uh, learn a little bit more about the ghost of Gateway Lane. Just the last couple weeks, it's been, you know, there's just like lots of stuff that's like, um, like it could be just that it's an old building, but also like why would it that only be like the last couple weeks that oh, it's been weird? Right. So like this horse over here, we had a group of kids that were in here that were being a little rowdy, the but horse. they weren't getting into trouble. The horse. Wow. Um, she put a quarter in and it took the quarter, which usually it'll spit it out if it doesn't like it. Um, it took the quarter, so she was like shaking the box and it didn't do anything. As soon as she walked over to the little, um, like the car, the racing games, it started going. So she turned around and came back and as soon as she touched it, it shut off Stop. again. It wow. was like maybe 10, 15 seconds and usually it runs for, I think around a minute is wow. what it runs for. So that was, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you believe that there's I ghosts? Lately it's been to a point where I'm like, okay, maybe there's something going on. But and for a while it was just kind of like, sure if you saw something. Story. All right, here we go. So we're off to head back to the bowling alley right now. A little night ride. We're gonna talk to Linda about the ghost over there. And then we're gonna head to the Kiev bar. Kiev bar. Oh boy, and that's where it's supposed to get really scary. Now we finally get a chance to sit down with Linda, the owner. And we are really intrigued by the stories of the ghosts that reside here, not only in Helper, but inside the bowling alley. So, Linda, can you tell us a little about that? It was built in the 20s as a stage theater oh. and then um, converted to a movie theater and then a bowling center in 1961. My father in law was the contractor coming, dropped the ceilings, and Bring, my mother-in-law told me that there was big dump trucks coming in and filling in the, the orchestra pit with gravel, getting ready for the lights. Has there been a funeral here before? Edith had told me, Edith Todd, she was another old-time bowler. She said that there were a couple of children killed up the canyon that died, and she said we had their funeral here because it was the largest area. But that is not documented. I don't have proof to back that up. The proof we have is a serviceman that got killed in California from Spring Glen, and they had his funeral here, and that there's documentation for that. When I had seen the, the gentleman in the flat shirt, I went back and I described him to my father-in-law, and he said, oh yeah, I said, there was a guy that looked just like that, the way you described, and he helped do the renovation, except for I didn't know his name. And I said, well, I just saw him on the stairs. It's been quite a few years ago. One of our employees would come in at night and do the lanes for us. And he said he went into the back and there was a pin behind lanes four and five. And he bent over to pick the pin up and the pin turned around and shot on the floor towards lane eight. And he says, he 
says, honest Linda, I did not kick it. The side door was open and he said, I could see the line of duster in the back and he says, I can do it. I can go back and grab the line of duster and then get back up here and do what I need to do. And he says, I went back there and I went to grab the line of duster. He says, but you know, I got to look. I got to look. And he says, I turned and looked and that pin was not there. When you finally see a spirit, it doesn't matter if people believe you. You, you know you saw it. It's like midnight and we're about to head over to what is called the Kiev Club. And, uh, oof, oh my God, we're actually going towards this thing. Okay, babe, so should we head on in? Head on into the Kiev Club. It's like, like, yeah, the Kiva or Kiva? Kiva or Kiva, Kiva. Yeah. Haunted, now at least we know that's a common word. Yes, yeah, it's and it's right one of the more haunted spots. I think it's worth checking out. It's a little dark here and there. I don't know. It's kind of like midnight right We're now. We're doing a lot of renovations here. Yeah. And there used to apparently be a big mob area as well. And I guess they found some bones in here. Wait. They found bones in there? That's what I heard. Oh. Uh, no, okay. We're going We're going over there. We'll give it a shot. Let's see. Dave. There it is. Oh, yeah. No, I think this is great. I think, you know, let them do their construction because there's a lot of work being done here. You can see it tarped off right now. So it's probably safer to not. Just back up as you back out. Watch the tarp. Let's see, bedtime. All right, so this is going to be home for the next few nights. A little Walmart camping? A little Walmart camping. Well, let's kind of check out the parking lot, see what we think. Here we are at Walmart. This looks tiny. It does, right? Wait, can we even park here? Uh-oh, it says no truck or RV parking at any time. Oh, really? There was a sign that said that? Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, no trucks or RVs parking lot at any time. Looks like you can get towed here, so there is no parking at this one. Oh, my God. And it looks like they're quite serious about it. Dun, dun, dun! The Walmart parking lot, it can be pretty difficult to find a spot to park your RV, especially in the middle of a road trip. Luckily, we found an awesome program for just our issue, Harvest Host. In short, we're able to park our RV and visit a local farm. Tonight, we're staying with alpacas. This is something new for us. It's uh, cloudy and a little rain. Oh, what's happening? Oh my happening. goodness. What is this cloud in the sky? Where, where are we? Come what? on, we've been living in Vegas. This is what? crazy. This is kind of nuts. Like, are we going to get some rain? I think we're going to get what some rain. What is rain? What is this wet stuff I on don't me? know. It's crazy. It's, I'm out in the shower. It's moisture in the air. Jeez. Well, we're heading to an alpaca farm. Harvest host. Yeah. I think it's a great substitute for Walmart. Oh no, definitely. I'm just glad we found it. Hi honey. Hi honey. How you doing? I see they love Hi. you. You, How you, you have doing? ways. You're like the alpaca whisperer. <laughs> the alpaca whisperer. <laughs> Billy versus Yoda. Billy versus Yoda. Billy versus Yoda. Good morning. Oh, good morning. It's a good, good rainy morning. I know. It's it's kind of like a lazy morning. We haven't had rain though in so long. You know. Being down in Vegas, right? So here it is. You hear like the pitter patter of the rain up on the roof, and it's uh, it's it is relaxing. Definitely kind of a lazy, relaxing morning. It's a beautiful farm here in Harvest Host with alpacas. I love it. But Speaking I think... of Harvest Host though, this is our second Harvest Host. It is, The yeah. first time we were going in Colorado and it was raining. Yeah, oh yeah. And the second one we're in, it's raining. That's true. So don't go to Harvest Host because it <laughs> rains at Harvest Host. <laughs> oh, no. Two for two. But you know what? But, it, but I, I love this farm. It's really, the alpacas are the cutest things. We should go in because I know Susie has a shop here um, and maybe a little bit of a tour of this 
uh, farm. And I'd be excited to see the shop and to hear her story. So what do you think? Should we go in? Absolutely. I got my raincoat on. You're not going to wear a raincoat? You don't need one. Uh, I'm, I don't need one. I'm going to dry off quick. Still don't like bull. I would dry off quick. <laughs> dry off quick. Well, I met my first alpacas in 87. When my husband was getting his doctorate at Oklahoma State, I worked at the vet school. Oh, wow. And um, then it took me 20 years to get my first alpacas in 2007. The shop is only about four years old. Gotcha. Four years old. And you make all of your own in-house stuff? Or are these products? No, from I, I make some and then we don't have the volume of, uh, we don't have enough alpacas to supply the store totally. So everything in the store is either made from alpaca or alpaca theme. Oh, great. pellets you can actually feed these lovelies and they're actually very gentle when you feed them I remember um out in Peru Dave you remember we're feeding alpacas oh, I remember but they were yeah a little more aggressive out there they were these guys are just super sweet like they all want oh, a treat they're a little bit bigger and I want to try and show oh, hi honey Are we ready to go? Let's go. We gotta hit on the road. Let's hit the road. I think it's time to get something to eat. I think we're at a spot that's called JC's Diner. It had good ratings, but it's packed. So I think it's time to eat. Maybe. Let's <laughs> go see, see, see what the weight is. Yeah, let's see. Oh, banana. Banana peel coming at you. So that was some fast eating. Yeah, that wasn't no weight at all, actually. Right? And I was uh, glad because of all that good smell. So as you're coming in, I was like, I know. We're hungry. Building up the appetite. Mm. Now the question, what do you get? Coffee first. So this is kind of a neat little find. I mean, while we're sitting here waiting for breakfast, the coffee, they're always oh, constantly yeah. tip us off on the coffee, which is great. And see, just all as right. we spoke about coffee, here right. it comes. JC's Country Diner. All right, food has arrived. It looks great. Oh my God, it looks that crazy looks again. like the perfect. Yeah, they did a nice job the kind of easy egg there. That country fried steak with a little bit of that sausage gravy, and of course the slices. Mm. Mm. Yours looks good too. Right, oh, that bacon is a killer. That's a lot of good bacon over there. Yeah. And plus, you got pancakes. Plus, I had a pancake. Mm. And I got a scone coming. So got some I goodies. am so excited. Babe, I am so stuffed. I am so stuffed. Right. And that's a what a great value though. I mean, that was twenty nine dollars for I everything. Like, so. I don't know. If we are on the strip. Oh boy. That would be. I mean, a lot of money. That would be a lot of money. <laughs> So just think, if we would have stayed at that Walmart, we'd have totally missed JC. I know, we would have missed a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff. So I'm glad it was the right decision. Uh, but everything's so green so up here, green. right? We're definitely not in Vegas anymore. No. It's like, everything's so green, what do you do? So green. But babe, I have a surprise for you. This next destination is pretty awesome. Totally psyched about it. And I do have a hint, want the hint? Okay, give me a hint. It might remind you a little bit of Iceland. <gasps> This is 
tiny. 14 feet. Yeah, go slow though. We got it. I'm going slow. We got it. We're about 12 feet. No, we're like 13. No, we're 12. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We made it. Okay. Oof. Surprise, huh? This is my surprise. Here it oh, is. What a great surprise. Welcome to a motel what the in Utah. What? No, come on. It's hot springs, baby. Hot springs here. Oh, wow, it's going to be a lot of fun. Remember Iceland and those hot springs? I, I want to try them here in I, Idaho. I feel like when you look over at the mountains off in the distance, it looks like a little bit of Iceland there. Well, that was easy. Right? Check it in. Boy, they're packed. They're busy. This is that yeah. crazy weekend this weekend, of course, you know? Yeah, this area is crazy. So, of course, holiday weekends bring business. But this place is so beautiful, and it's like right on that river. So I know. I'm excited to kind of check it out. Baby, baby, good baby. They're like, no swimming. I don't think we'll be swimming in the river. Yeah. We're going to head on down this way and see how we do it. And see how we do it. Where we are right now is probably one of the prettiest spots here in the park. And we're just abutting all this greeny, green vegetation and the water. Um, you guys, this views, this place is lovely. I know. It's so beautiful out here. I know, kind of uh, June and the lower 40s. Uh, June and the lower 40s. Right. Yeah. That's supposed to get in the 30s last night. I know, and it probably did. Right, they said snow maybe, but no snow. We didn't have snow this we morning. We did not have snow. Well, we were toasty, hugged up, the kitties were pooched. Bailey was relaxing on your leg. She was just kind of like just relaxing on that leg. It was like super warm cat. It was, it was a movie night for us, but we both fell asleep. We both fell asleep. We, we kind of woke up to the credits. So, <laughs> it gives us two movie nights. Same movie. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Good morning. So Dave and I are learning the ways of the RV this morning. So we're at this cool little Lost Trail Resort here in Lava Hot Springs, Idaho. And we're actually going to try and check out some hot springs. Now, having an RV, the one that we have, you have to drive it everywhere, or in this case, we have bikes, electric bikes, but it's rainy today, so we're not. So we're gonna either try and catch an Uber, we'll see which is probably unlikely. See if any exists here, or maybe might try or walking. Or we just might try walking. So it's about a mile from here. It's about 40 something degrees out, really windy and rainy, and yes, you guys, we're going in hot springs, right, Dave? Oh yeah, hot springs calling us. <laughs> yeah, we just actually lucked out. We met a wonderful, uh, somebody who works here, Melanie. So I actually offered to drive us down the mile to the hot springs, so uh, we're going to take her up on we're that. We're going to take her up. This is so great. Yes. Right? Oh, it's we'll awesome. We'll just have to figure our way back, which I think we will. Yeah, that we'll figure it out. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much. This is actually the hottest one here. And then it kind of goes from hot to cooler uh, that way. So we'll see where we start. We may start kind of in the middle and then work our way around. This one's probably really hot though. What do you think? I think this place is pretty cool. Yeah? Right? It's, uh, you haven't moved from this spot since I have you got not in moved. here. It's funny, there's multiple pools, but I just this is like one just right. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, that was a little too cool, that felt too hot. This one. This is the just, just right. Just right one, right? yeah. Well, I'm not out, moving. Get out over there. You'll be ready to hit the cold water in just a minute. Yeah, I, I, know, it's, it's get, I know. As you go in there, it gets warmer and warmer, yeah. right? I'm definitely feeling like we've got all the minerals in our body. Now I we need to cool so. off and get them out because I am getting a little dizzy up in here. Yeah, I think it's time to hydrate. Maybe, maybe I uh, get some food. Yeah, I think we heard there's a couple cool spots around town. There's a Thai spot. There's a there's a pizza spot. Now you know we don't have a way to get back, so might as well take our time figuring it out because it's going to be a mile walk. Hopefully we can get it before it rains again. Exactly. So these are the rapids, Dave. Can we actually go down? That looks awesome. Look at that. That looked like so much fun. Now we heard that down below there's sort of hot swells in parts, so you're gonna freeze yeah. your butt off and then that looks like too. So that fun. looks so much fun. Look at that. What a 
perfect kind of ending after the hot springs to be able to enjoy some food here at the Chuck Wagon, which seems to be a very popular restaurant here in town. Well, I got a little uh, broccoli cheddar homemade soup, which uh, came with the dinner. We got kicking chicken, right? It's like a chicken breast, a fried chicken breast with a gravy on it, some onions, I think, some potato, mashed potato. So we'll Sounds try it out. Good Sounds to good to me. Yeah, I mean, this to place has gotten some really great reviews. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I snuck a taste of that soup and it's delicious. Yeah, it seems good. I have a little, I do have a little soup of those uh, crackers. So good, so creamy, especially on a day like today. So good. Looks uh, pretty uh, like comfort food. Oh, big time. Right? Comfort and ready for a nap afterwards. Big time. But that is, uh, there it is, dude. Chicken, 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 chicken. chicken. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Grab up the cup. Grab up the scones. Whoa. Alright guys, you enjoy, okay? Holy moly. Thank you. Are you kidding me? Wow, that's a monster scone. That is a scone. That that's is a scone. scone right there. This might be dessert for later. I think so. Grogu, uh, you enjoying those views? So I, I wanted to take a second because we're about to leave this really beautiful RV park. Um, called Lost Trail here in Lava Hot Springs, Idaho. And as I was just enjoying the last several days here, I really kind of, it's very mentally therapeutic. You know, you're hearing, obviously now this is the sounds of the cars, but as it gets later in the day, the sounds of the river running, the birds, the wildlife, the little crisp air here, it's just something that helps recharge your mind and recharge your batteries. So it made me think to say, hey, take a second for yourself, whether it's a Sunday, Monday, or whenever you have a, a chance to enjoy a little bit of self-care, whether it's just writing in a journal, reading a good book, going to a park, um, or get out to places where you might have an opportunity to enjoy just some of the beautiful scenery around you. Uh, because I feel that is definitely a, a positive way towards a happier life. And I just wanted to come on here and say that because it felt right uh, this morning as I'm going for a walk, I'm breathing the air, I'm listening to the sounds of the river and the birds chirping. It just felt rejuvenating. And I just wanted to let you know that you should always get out there and take a little bit of time for yourself in this crazy busy world that we live in. Right, Grogu? He, he's, he's actually enjoying the views. Right, Grogu? Yeah! <laughs> Dave and I finally arrived at our next Harvest Host here, which is just 10 minutes outside of the Lava Hot Springs, Idaho area that we were just in. This is McCammon, McCammon, I believe, McCammon, Idaho. And the bison farm, the area, it's the energy, the smell is incredible. You can see actually behind us, the mountains, how low and how close you are to the clouds. Some of them right behind us here even have some snow still residing on top. There's horses that surround us, there's bison, and all this green pasture is absolutely incredible. I, I We're gonna be exploring this today. I believe we get a little tour and uh, of a little wagon ride and some meat, maybe meet some of the bison. I think it's gonna be a pretty cool day. Now this is gonna be our home for the next night, which is another great reason why Walmarts, who needs them when you got this? Let's check in. Let's check in. Absolutely. I'm so excited. I know. I've never been to a uh, bison farm no, before. I haven't either. I'm really uh, excited to check it out. I see someone over there. Uh oh, hello. <laughs> We're about to do even a, a wagon ride here and check out some of the bison. And it's right around the perfect season because there's some young bison out there. We even noticed a few as we came in. So we're checking in right now. And this is the harvest host, Jenny. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice so to meet you. It's super cool. So tell us a little bit about how you got into the harvest host here. And you know what? I tell people all the time that I need a t shirt that says I'm living the dream. And in parentheses underneath, it just says, just not mine. <laughs> because this so was not mine my my plan and my kids were starting to leave my oldest was a senior my husband was sitting on a hillside hunting with him and my son says to his dad dad there was something you could do anything you could do didn't matter where you live didn't matter how much it cost 
what would you do? My husband, without missing a beat, he says, well, I'd be a bison rancher. No way. Bison what? Ranch. So I had no idea that my husband had actually thought about this as a retirement plan. It's too expensive. You have to have a real job in order to get into yeah. all of the get set up. Okay. In my head, this was a three-year plan. We found some friends who were able to lease us some property. It took us a couple of years to get some fencing in and find out how we do this. And, and then we bought animals. We started with five animals. That was 2013. It is 2022. My three-year plan didn't pan out. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. it should be living the dream, just that mine. Just kidding, it really is mine. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the fifth season for this here. So I think we're in good hands. We got some snacks ready to kind of feed the bison. We've had a little lesson on who we should watch out for over there. A bison by the name of Patience with Tag V on our ear. But um, let's see how those tongues fly. <laughs> Patience just had a baby like a couple of days ago. So we may get a window before she decides okay. to come right on over here. Okay. So if you want okay. ready. With yeah. your first one or two, Hi. I can help you. Okay. And tickle you your tongue, you food. Oh, oh, there, there it go. goes. Oh, oh you, you did it. it. And lick my, that rough. You got yeah, it. hey, Sassy. Nice her, her calf is the oldest. If you start looking, so you can see their little horns. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Hi, Moody Maker. Oh, I see the new her baby. You ready? There you go. Get that tongue. There you go. Wrap it out. Wrap it out. There you go. Oh, wait. There you go. There you go. You got it. Yeah. Oh, Congratulations, Patience. Your baby's adorable. Okay, we got it. There we go. Okay. A little exfoliation on my hand. There you go. Ooh, they give me a good lick on that hand. It's like, eee. Oh, little scratchy poo. So <laughs> my mark. You're doing a great job, Beth. There you go, honey. There you go. Oh. There you go. You know, babe, why stay in a Walmart? We can stay in a place like this. Exactly. I mean, seriously. I mean, if you stayed at a Walmart, you'd miss all this beauty. <laughs> yes. And I'll tell you, it's definitely a way to go. Like if Walmarts, which now seem to be kind of chopping off they are. the block and yeah, saying you kidding. can't stay there's an RV. Well, Harvest Host is it. And we've experienced some of the coolest Harvest Hosts oh. so far. Absolutely. And for those who don't know Harvest Host, it's actually a membership program where you have some great stays. A lot, of, a lot of times just one night. Yeah. Some are more than one night, uh, but there's no, there is a fee for the membership, but no fee to stay. But I will say they do have, they do sell things, yes. right? And certainly uh, there's kind of an expectation to potentially buy some things from good Harvest Host hosts. Yeah, and you'd want to, because I feel like it's a great way to support, yes. you know, the fact that you can stay on their property and enjoy this. It's worth a t-shirt. It's worth a, a couple of bucks here and there to support what they're doing. Absolutely. It's awesome. All right, it is freezing. Time for some dinner. I am and ready And we have that. a really big road trip coming We do, up. I'm, I'm so psyched. Oh, I'm so psyched.